Hi everybody, welcome to Cincy Lifestyle on this Friday morning. We sure appreciate you joining us. Mona, good morning to you. Well, good morning, Clyde. I see the sun shining where I am. I hope it's shining all over. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful day, even if it's cold outside. Clyde. That is so true. That kind of like that it was that day we shot that opening segment. But anyway, let's not go there. <laughs> uh, we, you know, uh, we're still talking about uh, the inauguration. And one of the things that came out of it was a meme, which is kind of a thing that gets copied and maybe uh, altered and doctored up a little bit and made fun of on the Internet. And the meme is Bernie Sanders sitting in a chair, socially distanced, with his cold weather gear <laughs> on and his mittens on, right? And that thing has right. exploded on the Internet. He's been on late night talk shows uh, talking about that. Um, <laughs> Uh, one of the things they've done with it is they doctored up various photos with uh, Bernie Sanders in it. So, for instance, there's a meme of Bernie Sanders uh, sitting there uh, with Forrest Gump on the bench. <laughs> Remember that scene when he was sitting <laughs> on the bench? I sure do. <laughs> yep. And then there's another one, which is my personal favorite, of uh, Bernie with the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh, yes. I love that one. Bernie with the Golden Girls. Yes, fits right in. He fits right in. And there was also one, of course, that had to do with the uh, week. Uh, oh, yes, and there's some local ones. Like this uh, is Bernie. Uh, and he is at, uh, I think that's the, that's the football stadium. He's, he's uh, watching a Bengals game. The Bengals waiting. Oh, the meme is he is waiting for a Bengals playoff win. He'll be there <laughs> for Good quite thing a he while. he has those mittens. Yep. <laughs> and here's another one, waiting for Red's opening day. So. Oh, good old Bernie. He's keeping us entertained one way, <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> Now, he inspired, uh, Bernie did, this new form of artistic expression. But, Mona, you're going to show us a celebration of an older art form, aren't you? I sure am, Clyde. And it's a style of art that people have been practicing for hundreds of years. And tomorrow, there's a National Day celebrating it. And we're talking about handwriting and calligraphy. And to tell us more, I want to welcome Kathy Brewer, a calligrapher and literacy advocate. Kathy, thank you so much for talking to us today. Good morning. It's glad. Great time to be here with you to share this segment. Oh, it really is. And, you know, and I was sharing with you earlier that I got a D in handwriting, so I love, love, love this segment and able to talk to you. And about calligraphy and lettering art, it really seems to be flourishing right now. So what do you think about that? Why do you think that's happening? I think people need a break from their digital work days. And students need their break from their digital homework and remote classrooms. I do think that they want a creative outlet as well as something um, expressive. So they, you know, can get your angst out, some walk, jog, do extreme sports. And others of us need to express ourselves in words and line and beauty. And I am definitely on the words. That, um spectrum right there. So what sparked your passion about words and letters? Well, my father's first generation American and he and his sister were very adamant about being masters of the American language and that included their writing. Um, that carried through my mother who was a stickler about thank you notes. In fact, she put stationery in our stockings at Christmas to make sure that we would write thank you notes afterwards. It took off from there and turned out senior year in high school, I took a calligraphy class as an elective instead of chemistry because I was bombing chemistry. And from there on, it was wedding work and the rest is history. Well, you know what? Um, this is a time, Kathy, of computers and texting. And I'm going to ask a question that I've been asking for a long time and I need an answer. How do you feel about kids learning cursive in school? Should they, or is it okay to drop it? No, it's, it absolutely needs to be done. Um, yes! Of course, <laughs> it has returned to, in fact, many states have returned instruction of cursive handwriting as a core curriculum requirement. It had been off the books for a long time. Ohio just restored it a year or so ago. And so it is, again, being taught in the classrooms. 
And there's evidence, science-based evidence, there's neurologists and educators and psychologists that all agree now with empirical evidence that it is a cognitive development. Uh, you have fine motor skills, you have processing, you have tactile interaction. So it all combines to increased brain function. And it's also believed by some experts now that if you deny children the opportunity to learn cursive, you may be denying them some cognitive development. Wow, you know, I like it. That is empirical proof that we should be doing that. So you've got some classes coming up, Kathy. Tell us about that. Indeed, I do here at the Wyoming Fine Arts Center on Tuesdays and Thursday nights through April from 7 to 9. I'll be instructing different themes or focuses of lettering arts. This first one is January is National Handwriting Month. And as you said, John Hancock's birthday is January 23rd, which makes that National Handwriting Day. So we're focusing on hand. <laughs> well, I love it. So where can people get more information and sign up for classes? Certainly. You go to the Wyoming Fine Arts Center website for my classes specifically. The Greater Cincinnati Calligraphers Guild has a website and Facebook page that you can also access for local instruction from anything from beginners to master classes. All right, Kathy, thank you so much. And just to know that your background was not lost on us. Beautiful calligraphy looking background. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us today. <laughs> Clyde. Good catch, Mona. You know, one thing we all love to do on this show is highlighting local restaurants and bakeries. And yeah, sometimes we even like to roll up our sleeves, hit the kitchen and be a part of the tasty goodness. So you know what that means. It's time for another edition of Nailed It. This round, Allie is partnering with Sweet Jazz Treats. Take a look. Take two. Welcome to the Cincy Lifestyle Kitchen for another segment of Nailed It. You may recall we've already visited a couple local bakeries to challenge ourselves at their sweet treats. And today, we are going to be working with Sweet Jazz Treats to remake a drink cake. Let's bake. Sweet Jazz Treats. It's a custom bakery owned and operated by Jasmine Davis out of Newport, Kentucky's Incubator Kitchen. Jasmine makes a wide variety of baked goods, from custom cakes to cupcakes, cake pops, cookies, dessert jars, you name it. And this three-tier cake challenge has layers of complexity that will put us to the test. Step one, add ingredients into the mixing bowl. I consider preheating the oven step one. And we take the cup, and we take the egg, and we crack the egg, and it goes like so. Oh wait, I forgot to add the milk. I forgot to add the milk. I really hope I hit the pan. Oh yeah, what, one, two, three. Whoa, those puffed up. Oh my gosh. Is that supposed to happen? You must be kidding me. My cake has a little awning. There's a lot of space here. And number two, it looks like a giant burger. Icing is like concealer, but for cakes, no one will ever know. Or foundation, depending on how much you cake it on. <laughs> oh, that was bad. I can tell you this isn't right. <gasps> oh my God. She said, cut the bag, cut a hole in the bag. There was already a hole in the bag. You know, I thought this was going to be one of my best cakes, and I really have proved myself wrong. It is the moment of truth, the big time reveal. Are <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Feel free to lift the box. Oh, so one there it is for you. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Don't go Pre easy on me. Presentation wise, <laughs> this is not a sellable cake. <laughs> this is this is your Valentine's cake. This is your breakup cake. Yeah, this is your breakup cake. That's the Valentine's Day. <laughs> so this cake, I would give maybe a three forever. Oh, I'll take. I'll, I don't care if you're ten points. This could be ten for points. a three. But the look inside and the taste inside with the layers is definitely 
a good eight. Yes, so I got five and a half out of ten. Five and a half and ten. I think I nailed it. Yes, I nailed you did. It. <laughs> it's about what's inside that cat. It does. It's, it's got all some about edge. the heart. Mm -hmm. edge I like character. it. Yes, it does. <laughs> nailed it. I love um, it. So, yes. what is the one thing that you want people to know about sweet jazz treats? Oh my gosh. Um, that we are a small business bakery, mm -hmm. uh, minority owned, women owned. Um, we can do any dessert as far as cakes, custom cakes you actually want. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually um, in Newport, but we do deliver all over greater Cincinnati area, even Dayton mm -hmm. um, as well. And then we have big things coming up as far as our dessert food truck. So for those festivals and events and stuff like that, yeah. that is to be announced when that is completed, hopefully in the next couple months. So I'm excited about that too, because that's another uh, adventure that you know hasn't really happened yet. So, so it's growth. I'm I'm excited. So yeah, I'm excited for you. Yes, and <laughs> I'm excited that you actually were willing to try my cake. <laughs> it was good, y'all. It was really good. I'm not just saying this. Anybody I know knows I'm a very blunt person. See, again, <laughs> it's what's inside that counts. Yes. It's not the looks that matter. No, it doesn't. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for this having me. This is so fun. <laughs> right now, I want to welcome Allie to uh, join uh, Mona and me. Uh, look, the taste thing, it appears you've got down, but I mean, Visually, uh, Allie, what happened? Was there an earthquake? <laughs> Clyde, there's a whole, this is a whole story. Okay, I, I think there's a reoccurring theme here. Yes. Every time I do these nailed it pieces, aesthetically, they just don't come out looking like I would like them to look, but the taste is always there. As far as the looks, where I went wrong was I didn't cut the cakes to make them even. Jasmine pulled out a level and I should have done that. Um, and it started to just break away in the pan. So I tried to get and patchwork with the icing and then it ended up just falling. <laughs> you were and, using yeah. icing as glue? Yes. The, it yes, was spackle? Was yes, I was try trying to glue some of the pieces back together, but then it and the buttercream just kept shifting the whole cake. And then the icing, the pipe, the beautiful piping that Jasmine does, I put it in the wrong bag, and the bag already had a hole in it. And by that time, I just started throwing some Oreos on it and um, uh, called it a day. <laughs> I am typically a person that says, you know, hey, it's got to look good for me to taste it. But I think I might have been missing out on some things because you got to eat on the taste. So what was the hardest part about making that cake at least taste good? The, honestly, it really was the icing and putting it all together. This is where, full circle, Jasmine, she... Uh, what sparked my attention with her creations was she does really, really fun, you know, Nike Air Jordan cakes and really intricate cupcakes <laughs> and beautiful designs. And so when I reached out, I was like, hey, let's do this particular cake. And I'm really glad we didn't go that route because it was way more complicated. And she was so sweet. And she goes, we're going to just ease up a little bit and gave me the drip cake instead. But it just proves her ability to create some of these amazing treats. And she has such a great backstory where she was in the corporate world and found a calling to go down the baking path. And she really just self-taught herself. Uh, that's not in the cards for me, I don't think. Aww. But this is why people like Jasmine are here. So I highly recommend <laughs> taking a look at all of her custom cakes at sweetjazztreatsbakery.com. And you can custom order. So if you have an idea, you can give her a call and talk it through. I will not give my number because you should call her directly. <laughs> Allie, I will pay you to do the Nike Air Jordans. I'm just saying, uh, I'll pay you to do that. That's one that I was one of them that I was going to do, and I'm really glad she didn't give me that test. All right, we got we to gotta run, Allie, but thank you so much. And folks, stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. As we mentioned earlier in the show, we love celebrating national days and months, and we've got another one for you to celebrate, National Soup Month. 
We've got a true foodie to help us get through this cold winter season with some soup recipes, and he is here with us right now, the one and only food enthusiast, Don Paul. Don, thank you for, thank you for joining us today. Hey, you know, I appreciate it. You know, soup is, it, everybody loves soup. Matter of fact, there's 10 billion bowls of soup are consumed in a year. 10 billion, is that crazy? But you know the number one most popular soup out there? I, I'm gonna say chicken. You're exactly right, chicken noodles. Now, I'm gonna show you a recipe that has nothing to do with chicken noodle soup, but nevertheless, that is the number one. Okay, tell but us you what know, you're making uh, for us today. I, we're, you know what, we're gonna make a very simple, it's kimchi beef noodle soup. And, but you know, the thing, the basis of soup is, why not have some nutrition and everything? Mm -hmm. Our base is gonna be Lona Life. Lona Life is a bone broth and it has different flavors. And bone broth, just to you know, remind everybody out there, it's great for the gut, great for the hair, great mm -hmm. for the skin. So if you're gonna you know, enjoy uh, some soup, go for nutrition. So we're gonna start with um, just plain old, I have a brick of ramen noodles. You can use any noodles, but, but they're cooked and you're gonna add it to your pan. And you're going to add, again, the Lona Life. It's very simple. It's powder. You're going to add that in. And then we're going to want to add two cups of water. Stir it up a little bit. Now, we're going to have some beef in there. You can use beef strip. I'm using ground round. You're going to put mm. that in and mix it on up. Of course, you'll be heating this up. Uh, sure. And kimchi. Kimchi is really unique. It has this great flavor. It's cabbage. Actually, it's Napa cabbage and radish among spices, but that's going to give mm. it some good flavor, too. Now, as you mix this up and heat it, you know, this time of year, too, you go in the grocery store and the produce, you're kind of fighting with getting really fresh produce. I love Karen's. Karen's Natural. What they do is freeze dry your veggies and fruits, so they're great for kids and everything, but I'm going to use freeze dried peas. Loses no nutrition when you free, uh, freeze dry uh fruit and veggies you lose nothing in nutrition so you're going to add that and we're going to heat you're the heat of about 15 or so minutes and the beauty of this is it's quick it gives you about well if you're really hungry it's going to give you more than for one person but it's really quick and tasty and you're going to just scoop it out in a bowl once it's cooked a little bit now the other kick to this which is kind of fun is you're going to put a fried egg right on top oh. so it's kind of a fun little thing uh, it's a nice hearty soup, and it's different than our classic chicken noodle soup, which we all love and have our favorites. So it's a different, it's a different look. All right, Don. Hey, man, you've walked us through this quite beautifully. So let's help people connect to this recipe and others like it from you. How do they get in touch with you to get more information? I use this recipe from LonaLife.com. Um, you go there. Karen's actually has recipes on their site too. Uh, shop uh, Karen's uh, uh, Naturals.com. You can go either place, get great recipes, and really experiment. Experiment with the soups because this is the time of year to do it when it's a little brisk outside. Absolutely. Don, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, and happy soup day. Thank, <laughs> thank you, sir. You as well. Mona? Taking care of ourselves and our family is more important now than ever. So to help us stay well and healthy from the inside out, lifestyle expert Megan Thomas-Head, who is here with us to say and show us some great products for looking and feeling our best selves in the new year. Megan, welcome. So what do you have for us today? Good morning. Happy New Year. Yes, I've got some awesome wellness products, a little wellness 101, if you will. And let's start with a brand that parents everywhere go crazy for. It is Mommy's Bliss. They're a mom-created brand. They've been around for over 20 years creating supplements for babies, kids. They've got a new mom line, a new kid's sleep line. Today, it is all about immunity support for those kiddos. So we've got the Mommy's Bliss Organic Elderberry Drops and the Kids Elderberry Gummies. Now, the drops, these are good for ages four months and up. It's going to offer that immunity support, like I mentioned. It's got organic herbs, extracts, prebiotics, vitamins packed in. The gummies, which are extremely delicious, these also offer immunity support. Now, these are good for ages two years and up. It's going to give you that black elderberry, zinc, vitamin C in that. Now, the drops retail for $10.99. You can find them at Target, Walmart, Walgreens, Amazon, and the gummies. $14.99. You can find those on Amazon. Oh, gummies. <laughs> and even as an adult, I'm not going to lie, I still take gummies. So it's, it's a much smoother, easier way to take your vitamins. 
And these are actually really delicious because I've tried them. <laughs> <laughs> age, is, it's, age is just a number. So exactly, what do we have in the exactly. middle there? Is that a mascara of some sort? Oh, oh, it is a fabulous mascara. I'm about to ah. blow your mind. Yeah, sometimes with wellness, it means just feeling glamorous too. So I have got the Rapid Glam Eyelash Enhancing Mascara. Now this is from the same company that brought you Rapid Lash Eyelash Enhancing Serum. This is the world's first mask serum, we'll call it. It's got the serum, the primer, the mascara all rolled into one. So you're still getting the same benefits of Rapid Lash with a fiber infused primer. It's got the blackest of black mascara pigment. And it's also a no clump mascara, which I know us ladies appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you can get healthier, longer looking lashes in as little as six weeks. It retails for $34.95. You can find it at dermstore.com. And you know, the mascara is such an easy way without having to put on a bunch of makeup to make you feel really, really good about yourself when going out if you don't want to oh. fully glam up. Oh, definitely. So that's awesome. That that's the trick for sure. This is an awesome product. <laughs> Amen. And I see a little bit of moisturizing cream, which is extremely important. <laughs> yes. You know, winter means our skin mm -hmm. is susceptible to being dry. So Jergens has some great products to combat that. This is the Jergens Ultra Healing Plus Hand and Body Cream. So think ultimate hydration for skin. It helps relieve itchiness and redness from extra dry skin. It's got a vitamin infused formula. So it's got vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin B5, a plant protein complex packed in as well. Retails for $7.99 and you can find it at target.com, walmart.com, and of course on Amazon. Again, where can people find all these great products? For all of this and so much more, you can go to bourbonblondeblog.com and follow me on Instagram at, at Megan Tiffany. Awesome. Megan, thanks for taking the time. Thanks so much for having me. And that is Cincy Lifestyle for today, January 22nd. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you on Monday. Make it a great day. Thanks for watching our video. And if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, we love to say it, make it a great day.